All right, guys, we're gonna go through the 2016, uh, yeah, 2016 MCAT. Uh, so far, it's probably the one with the uh, largest range of mathematical ability required. There's a lot of really simple stuff, but uh, towards the end of this exam, some uh, yeah, pretty weird, pretty weird mathematics, to be honest. So, without further ado, let's get into it. We're starting off with a classic geometric problem uh, for the MCAT, uh, given that the rectangle area, or the area of a rectangle, sorry, is some equation, can you find the sides? So it's just factorization. So we're just going to take the area of the rectangle, x squared minus x minus 2, and we're just going to factorize that. So x minus 2 and x plus 1. We're actually told that x plus 1 is a side of a rectangle. And so the other side is x minus 2. So that's your two sides of your rectangle. Uh, cool. Uh, what do we know about the value of x? Well, we know the value of x, uh, well, we know that the area has to be positive. So what they're basically just asking us to do here is find the values of x which make this greater than 0. Well, I've already factorized, so we're straight into x minus 2 times x plus 1 being greater than 0. So our two roots for this, if it was a parabola, are at 2 and negative 1. And we want, uh, we want the area to be positive. We can't have the area go, go negative. So that means that x must be less than negative 1. So all of these values of x, and x must be greater than 2. So all of those values of x. So that's what we know. x is uh, greater than 2, and x is less than negative 1. Uh, you could probably go equals 2 is as well. Um, but doesn't just in case they wanted a zero area uh, but so the true answer here is that x is greater than 2 okay we can't have a negative area okay so we can't have any of this can't have any of these x values in red uh, but we also can't have a negative length so this is actually obsolete as well so that is a final answer and that's a that's a merit question cool okay uh, uh, Rani has more money than Hone. If Rani gave Hone $20, they would have the same amount. So that means that R and, sh and she gives him 20 bucks. So minus 20 is the same as Hone plus 20. So when he gains 20 and she loses 20, they have the same amount. The other thing is, if instead Hone gave uh, Rani $22, Rani then uh, would have twice as much. So, uh, what would that one look like? Uh, Rani plus 22 would be the same as, well not the same as, but it would be Hone minus 22, but she would now have twice as much as him. So two lots of Hone take away 22 is the same as uh, Rani plus 22. So let's just go through those again. So she loses 20 and he gains 20. They have the same amount. When he loses 20 and she gains... So when he loses 22 and she gains 22, she has twice as much as him. So those are our two equations. So what we can do here is we can add 20 to both sides. So this first equation becomes r equals h plus 40. And we can now substitute that in to that equation. So 2h minus 44 by expanding is going to be equal to h plus 40 plus 22. h plus, what's that going to be? 62. Subtract an h and add 44 h is now equal to 100, 
106, which means R is going to be equal to 146. So that's how much money they have. So when Rani gains $22, that's going to be 168. And losing 22 from 106, uh, that's going to be 84. So there we have the double. And when we lose 20, 126, and gaining 20, 126, they have the same. So they do work. So notice that I've gone back and I've just checked that that makes sense. Cool. All right, next question. Okay, uh, I haven't fully written this one out. But it's, you've given A in terms of N, and you're given B in terms of N, and it's just asking for an equation with just A and B in it. Okay, so we're trying to write, uh, we're trying to write an equation that's just A and B with no Ns. So it's uh, give an expression for A in terms of b so we want a to equal some sort of equation that just has b in it okay now this is a year 11 mcat so it shouldn't really be too hard so we're going to try by just expanding and simplifying both of those so a is just going to be 3n squared now we've got minus 12n but we've got this plus n on the end minus 11n, and then we've got 6. So that's A, expand and simplified. B, expand and simplified, we've got 2n squared, plus n squared, so 3n squared. Now that's nice. Ignoring the 11n plus 6, we can just see that A is equal to B, so that's good so far. Hopefully, we're going to get a negative 11n as well. So then we're going to go negative 12n, plus n, so that is a negative 11n. And then we've got negative six, but we're adding three, so negative three. Awesome. So a and b are very close for those n values. So a is actually equal to b, if those numbers were the same. They're not, what do we have to add to b to make those numbers the same? Well, we're going to have to add 9. And there's our answer. A is just B plus 9. So A is just this with 9 added on. And that's what we've shown. Cool. All right. Uh, we're solving 4 times 2 to the X equals 2 to the 6X plus 3. So we want the base numbers to be the same. So 4 is just 2 squared. And we'll multiply that by 2 to the x, and that's equal to 2 to the 6x plus 3. Same base means the powers can add. So 2 to the x plus 2 is equal to 2 to the 6x six, six plus 3. Now the base, base numbers are the same, so the powers must be the same across their equality. x plus 2 is equal to 6x plus 3. Subtract the x, subtract the 3. Negative 1 is 5x, so negative 1 over 5 is equal to x. That is our solution. Hopefully that makes sense. So, over the page, I think that's the end of question 1. Yep, question 2. Alright, let's have a look at this. A... Question 2a, y is 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, and we know that x is equal to 4. So we're just going to be subbing in 4 and figuring out what y is. So y is just 3 times 4 squared, or 16, minus 2 times 4 plus 5. 3 sixteens is the same as 6 eighths, so 48. We're taking away 8, and we're adding 5. So we should get... 45 as our solution. Nice, just subbing it. Okay, question 2b. We're solving an inequality. 
at the moment it looks like it's a quadratic inequality, but because I'm, I've got a wee bit of experience, I can see that an x squared is going to cancel on both sides, and we're just going to be left with a linear inequality, which is going to be quite nice. Uh, so, expand both sides. x squared minus 4, because that's a difference of two squares, is greater than x squared plus x minus 6. We can subtract x squared off both sides. So minus 4 is greater than x minus 6. Adding 6 to both sides, x is less than 2. That is your solution there. Okay. Now, these, these ones are usually can be pretty tricky. n is a whole number. 6 times 2 to the n plus 1 is greater than 123. Now, there's a few different ways of doing this. The, now, the key here is that n is a whole number. So, I usually want to get the bases to be the same, at least on one side of these. And, unfortunately, 6 and 2 can't be run on the same base. What I can do, though, is I can divide both sides by 3. So, I'll show you what I mean by that. So, this is obviously 3 times 2 times 2 to the n plus 1, greater than 123. Because that's gives you three times two gives me the six. So let's divide both sides by three. Two times two to the n plus one is greater than forty-one. Three forty-ones are 123. So now I can merge these powers. So that's just two to one. So I got two to the n plus two is greater than forty-one. Now because n is a whole number, I have to be greater than forty-one. That means I'm allowed to be equal to 42, but no, 2 to the power of some whole number won't give me 42. So 43, neither, 44, 45, 46, none of those. So what I do is I go 2 to the n plus 2, greater than or equal to the next base of 2, which is 64. So 2 to the n plus 2 is greater than or equal to 2 to the 6. Because I'm allowed to actually be equal to 64. Because I just had to be greater than 41. And because n is a whole number, that's the first value that I can actually attain where with uh, n being a whole whole number. So, because obviously 2 to the power has to be uh, powers of 2. So 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64. And that's the first one that's greater than 41. So that means that n plus 2 is greater than or equal to 6. So n is greater than or equal to 4, which means that n can be 4, 5, 6, 7, so on. Okay, pretty strange uh, MCAT question here. I mean, for D, just solve a simple quadratic, so just do that. Uh, x plus 4, x minus 2 equals 0, x is 2, x is minus 4. Hopefully I've copied these questions down because that is uh, pretty simple, really. Uh, and back then, you got a merit for doing that question. Okay, uh, question E, we're solving this thing. Now, if you expand, if you multiply through by 2 and x plus 2, x minus 2, you're going to get a cubic, which is outside of the requirements for NCA. Level 1, you're not solving cubics this year, that's uh, later on. So, let's ignore this side for now, let's simplify this side. So, we're going to factorise top and bottom. x plus 4, oh, I see why they've asked us to do that now. It's the same thing. So, x plus 4, x minus 2. And we've got x plus 2, x minus 2. So, they've obviously wanted us to factorise this, so we see this easily. And x... Minus 2 is going to cancel with x minus 2. So side note, x can't be 2. Because if x is 2, you're going to be dividing by 0 there. Okay. That leaves x plus 4 over x plus 2 equals x over 2. Now we can multiply by 2 and multiply by x plus 2 to get rid of the denominators. So 2x plus 4 equals x, x plus 2. Expanding... Both sides, 2x plus 8 is equal to x squared plus 2x. Cool. 
and now we're going to subtract 2x off both sides so that 8 equals x squared x is then equal to plus minus root 8 which is actually uh, plus minus 2 root 2 same thing uh, why is that the same thing? because 8 is 4 times 2 and we're square rooting it so it's square root of 4, 2 times the square root of 2 so 2 root 2 if you wanted to go all the way down to the most what is considered the most simple way of writing root 8 awesome don't forget your plus minus but that year that wasn't a requirement alright Raj kicks a ball he kicks a ball and the model for the ball through the year is given to us by this equation so what does x measure? obviously it measures the horizontal distance of the ball what percentage of the horizontal distance that the ball travels will it be above 3 meters? alright so the ball goes across so 100% of the distance that's above the ground and we want to know what percentage, what percentage of that horizontal distance is it above three meters? All right. So how long is it above ground for? So where is negative x squared minus four greater than zero? Okay. So negative x squared plus four greater than zero. We're going to add x squared. So 4 greater than x squared. Well, that means that x must be less than 2. So uh, there's obviously a line of symmetry down the middle. So 2 and negative 2. So between 2 and negative 2, it's above the ground. All right, now we want to know what values it's above 3. So negative x squared minus 4 above uh, above 3, sorry. So negative x squared plus 4 is greater than 3. And we're going to subtract the 4. So negative x squared greater than negative 1. And I'm just going to add x squared and add 1. I'm just going to switch this around. So 1 is greater than x squared. So that means that when it's above 3 metres, it's from negative 1 to 1. So x is less than 1, greater than negative 1, uh, 1. So for a distance of 2 units, it's above 3. And for a distance of 4 units, from negative 2 to 2, it's above uh, 0. So that means that 2 out of the 4 units, it is above Three meters or 50% cool that was already messy sorry all right question three rectangle has an area of x squared plus 4x minus 12 what are the side lengths factorize just like question 1a uh, someone was getting pretty lazy writing this exam so x plus 6 x minus 2 uh, it has a, I don't know, length of x plus 6 and a width of x minus 2. If the area is 128 centimetres, calculate x. All right, x squared plus 4x minus 12 is 128. So we're just going to subtract 128, which should be negative 140. And that's now equal to zero. And you can see now that uh, we can factorize this. So 10 and 14 should work. Uh, x plus 14, x minus 10 is zero. So x is obviously 10, you can't have a negative length just as we discussed earlier. So x equals 10. Okay, this uh, pendulum problem was quite interesting. It's just a big word problem basically just asking you to rearrange. So uh, it's Brooke, she knows that the type takes for pendulum to swing from one side to the other and back is given by this formula. So the time is equal to two pi times the length of the pendulum 
divided by uh, gravity or 9.8 or square rooted. So basically write a formula she could use to find the length of the string in terms of time. So basically just rearranging for L. We want L, we want to get all the way down to L equals. Okay, so let's divide by 2 pi. That equals L over 9.8, all square rooted. And now it's square both sides to get rid of um, the square root symbol. Okay, so we'll square both sides. I'll just leave that in brackets because it's just going to be a bit nicer. Squared, and that's L over 9.8. And now we just got to times by 9.8. So L is... 9.8 times t over 2 pi, all squared. Uh, and back then, uh, that was an excellence question. Right, but they're becoming uh, more like merit questions now. All right. Okay, show that 2 over x plus 3 plus x over 5 is the same as x squared plus 3x plus 10 over 5x. All right, we want... When you're adding fractions, you want the denominators to be the same. And the easy way of getting the same denominators is to multiply them. So we could make the denominator of this 5x, which means we would have to multiply top and bottom, because we have to keep the fractions the same. We have to multiply the top and bottom of this by 5. So that's 10 over 5x. You can kind of see it, that's 2 over x now. The other one we want to have over the same value, so 5x, which means we have to times the top by x as well. 3x plus x squared. Now we can add because the denominators are the same. So we get x squared plus 3x <coughs> plus 10 all over 5x. And I teach it that way first because I know you can just go multiply, multiply, multiply. Some people call that the upside down picnic table, but that's a little bit algorithmic for me. I like to actually understand how that works. So there it is. Easy. I don't know why I left a whole page for that problem. Alright, I think this is the last question. Um, basically, investigate what happens when the order of these original number changes. So, uh, obviously the point of these videos is that you've done this, attempted the MCAT, this MCAT first, and now you're looking for working and solutions. So basically it's 1 plus 3 is 4, 3 plus 5 is 8, and 5 plus 7 is 12, and then 4 and 8 is 12, and 8 and 12 is 20, and 12 and 20 is 32. So it's like Pascal's triangle, uh, but it's flipped, and it starts with different numbers, and we add down like that. So, right, what happens when the order of the original numbers changes? So we're just going to try 7, 1, 3, 5, I guess. So we just change the order. We're just investigating what happens when the order changes. Uh, so now we're going to get 8, 4, 8. Uh, and that's going to be 12 and 12. And that's going to get 24. Oh, okay. So the order the order is going to change that final number. Uh, but you can't... Just doing something once doesn't count as an investigation. So we'll try another one and just make sure that that is indeed happening. So 3157, 4, 6, 12, 10, 18, 28. Okay, so if we change the order of those original numbers, we get different outputs. You might want to write something like that down. Uh, I think if you do two different triangles, getting different numbers, that's a merit question that year. Crazy. Okay, find using algebra the relationship of the numbers in the first line to the numbers in the fourth line when the order is changed. Okay, uh, using algebra. So let's just go for, now those numbers are different, so we're gonna go A, B, C, D, and we'll add these up. Actually, I'm gonna give myself, we're gonna make this a bit wider, A, B, C, D. So when we add these two, we get A plus B, obviously, B plus C, and C plus D. Now we're going to add these two. So I'm going to get A, oh, I'm going to get 2B and C. A plus 2B plus C, and I'm going to get B, when I add these together, 
I'm going to get B plus 2C plus D. And now I'm going to add these together. There's only one A. There is uh, three Bs. There's three Cs. And there's just a D. Okay. So what does this mean? You're going to have to write this out in the exam, but I'm just going to um, say it because uh, you can see how painful my writing is. When I try to write fast, it gets worse. Basically, if A and D switch, then uh, the result doesn't change. Obviously, just having one A and one D. If we switch those around, then the uh, final number won't change. If we switch B and C around, the final number won't change because either way, you're going to have 3B and 3C. However, if we change A and B around, it will change. It'll be different. And if we change D and C around, it will be different. And obviously D and B and A and C. So if we switch one of the inner two numbers with one of the outer two numbers, then we're gonna get a different answer. But uh, the order, the, the first and last number can, stay this, can be switched and the middle two can be switched. Okay, that's not too bad. I think that would be an excellent if you wrote that stuff down. Uh, right. If Jason writes four consecutive numbers in order, what do you know about the numbers in the, if the bottom number is divisible by three? Okay, so he's got four consecutive numbers. So it's quite a common uh, junior math problem uh, or a year 11 algebra problem. Consecutive numbers, that would just mean that the first number, let's say x, the next number would just be the one after that. So adding one. And the next one would be plus two. And the next one would be plus two. Three, they are consecutive, just going up by one every time. All right, now we're going to add these. So 2x plus 1, 2x plus 3, 2x plus 5, 4x plus 4, uh, 4x plus 8, 8x plus 12. And now apparently this last number is divisible by 3. So 8x plus 12 has to be divisible by 3, which means we can have 8x over 3 plus 4, all right? I'm just showing you that 12 is actually divisible by 3, and that would mean that x would have to be a multiple of 3, wouldn't it? Only x being a multiple of 3, so x would then have to be uh, 0, I guess, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and so on. Only then would we get whole number value for that last that last part there. Yeah, so yeah. If Jason writes four consecutive numbers in order, and uh, what do you know about the numbers if the bottom number is divisible by three? Well we know that x has to be a multiple of three to get a whole number there. So as the, and that's kind of true as well because as the middle two numbers in the last line are multiples of three, then the last line will be a multiple of three if the first and last numbers add to a multiple of three. It's getting quite confusing, but basically we know that 8x plus 12 is divisible by three. 12 is divisible by three. How do we make 8x divisible by three? X would have to be a multiple of three. That's it, basically in a nutshell. That is the entire MCAT done. That is the 2016. Nice.